The MAB program was created in 1997 in response to a Board of Regents challenge to help grow and develop talent in food, agriculture, and animal health across the state of Kansas, particularly in our rural communities. Our first cohort pictured here um, launched in 1998 and they graduated in the year 2000. Over the last 20 years, more than 500 students have participated in our program. The demand for the program quickly expanded because of the skills our students gained and the MAB reach quickly expanded domestically and internationally. We were the first distance degree program in the country focused on the business and economics involved in managing production agriculture, food and animal health companies. We're not an MBA and we're not an MS in, ag in agricultural economics. We are a professional degree program aimed at training managers for peak performance in one of the most rapidly changing industries today. Our students come from a variety of different backgrounds. Some have scientific backgrounds and are learning management and business skills. Others come to us grounded in production agriculture, but need the business background to make a positive impact in their companies or operations. Still others have a DVM or other advanced degree, but realize they need to brush up on their skill set in business and computers to lead their companies well. And finally, others come to us with really solid business training, but aren't familiar with the supply chain or networks involved in our sector and want to learn specifically how to do business in our target industries. Our students hail from more than 40 states. And as we've pulled the 500 students that we've had in the program, they've indicated that one of the most important ingredients on the academic side of the equation is that the program and its students be vertically integrated. In any of our cohorts, you can find students who represent a variety of ages and relationships to their companies from all across the globe. We've had a presence, a presence in more than 35 companies, countries, sorry. As an overview, again, the MAB program is a two and a half year program consisting of 42 graduate credit hours. We're a thesis bearing program and there are two campus sessions involved with the program. All of our students are working full time in production or industry and our program is delivered executive style. So our faculty have perfected the use of internet delivery of classes over the last 20 years, but we also provide additional tools to help you be successful. All of your course material will be supplied through our learning management system, which is Canvas, but you'll also get a USB drive for you to use if you need it. We provide pre-recorded lectures and podcasts, and once a week, each of our courses has a live recitation session that's associated with it. The faculty use this in a couple of different ways, um, sometimes to provide new material and answer questions, work through any difficulty that's arisen on homework or applications of the learning, also, these recitations are also recorded. So if you're traveling during the recitation scheduled time, you can access the recording of that session online at your convenience. And we know that our on-campus sessions set us apart from your typical off-the-shelf MBA program. We do have two different cohorts. The Heritage Cohort meets in Manhattan, Kansas in January and March each year for a week each time. And the animal health cohort meets for one week in August and one week in October at our K-State Olathe campus. So that's a little bit to refresh your memory about the MAB program um, and how it works, where our students come from, and a little bit more about who we are. It's my pleasure to introduce to you today, Dr. Alan Featherstone. Dr. Featherstone has served as the director of the Master of Agribusiness program at K-State for the last 20 years and also serves as our department head for the Department of Agricultural Economics. Prior to joining the faculty at K-State, Dr. Featherstone completed a bachelor's degree in agricultural economics and economics from the University of Wisconsin, River Falls, as well as a Master of Science and a PhD in agricultural economics from Purdue. Dr. Featherstone is recognized as a leading scholar in ag finance. His work has resulted in numerous teaching and research awards, including the APLU Teaching Award, two Sid Lit Awards, and the USDA FAS Excellent in Teaching Award. Dr. Featherstone has been widely published, over 317 articles, 
in scholarly journals to his credit. Possibly more important, however, is the foundation his work has laid for other scholars, as he's been cited by more than 4,000 other publications in the field. In addition to his endeavors at K-State, Dr. Featherstone has extensive experience lecturing and researching in Africa, Asia, South America, Russia, Oceania, and Europe. So it is my pleasure to open the floor to Dr. Featherstone so he can field some of the frequently asked questions. If you have a question for Dr. Featherstone, feel free to enter that into the chat box. And I'm also checking our Twitter account to see if any questions have popped up there. And then I do have a few questions that students who are not able to attend have sent in that they would like you to address Dr. Featherstone. Good afternoon. Um, welcome. And uh, I'll just open it up for questions. And um, hopefully we can have a discussion here. And you can type them in or you can just, uh, I think you can turn on your mic and just ask them directly. Um, the question there, and uh, um, it was from uh, John. Um, um, Deborah typed it in. Uh, the question is, what will this program teach me that an MA, MBA program won't? Probably a couple aspects there. One is that uh, um, because we focus on the food and agricultural supply chain, um, it will uh, um, provide that uh, um, um, adjustment in business and economic concepts that uh, um, take advantage of the technology of the industry. Many times in an MBA program, you'll have more of a generic um, type um, program where they can't focus on the science and technology within, within the industry. And so there'll be discussions with regards to um, how do you uh, um, think through the issue when uh, maybe the leader leg time is two or three years as opposed to, uh, to, uh, to that. Um, the other thing is, is that your cohort is all going to be within the food and egg industry. And so while it's certainly good to have networks in other industries, um, many times having a network within the industry that you're working in um, will give you that, that opportunity. And so you'll develop a network as uh, Deborah shared on the slides that uh, do allow that uh, um, um, worldwide and uh, national network within the food and agricultural space. That gives you the ability to uh, um, use um, alumni to, uh, to answer your questions. And so things that, ar that arise in the industry um, you will have developed those relationships. The uh, second question is, um, how does it compare to other programs or dual programs at other campuses? Um, in, in terms of, uh, probably there's a couple areas where it's, it's a little bit different. Um, one is, it is very much applied to your firm. And so many of the homework assignments, many of the uh, um, 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 term papers or final projects will be related directly to your firm. And so you will end up applying those um, directly. The other thing I think that's unique is uh, um, we uh, um, allow you to see how other students in the uh, um, class apply that information directly to their companies. And so uh, um, um, in the uh, presentations that you'll do um, at the end of many of these classes, you'll hear your classmates um, think through the same economic and business concepts and apply them in a way that maybe you haven't thought of. And so um, there's a lot of cross learning in uh, the program within, within the sector. And so I think that's uh, um, certainly there. 
in terms of um, good question from Pete here in terms of what is the difference between the uh, heritage cohort and the animal health cohort um, would you recommend one for someone working in a pro pork production system in terms of the basic concepts the basic concepts are going to uh, be the same in uh, in either cohort um, in terms of you're going to learn um, basic finance skills basic marketing skills ba basic uh, um, production management skills uh, marketing channel skills and so um, from that perspective they're they're similar in terms of the the big difference is uh, um, obviously the animal health cohort is going to have individuals that uh, are much more in the animal health industry and uh, um, and so there is going to be more of a focus on um, issues associated with that um, certainly um, your cohorts in the animal health um, um, cohort are going to uh, um, be from the pharmaceutical industry um, and uh, and so those are some of the um, um, skills in that that uh, you will be able to develop um, with regards to the uh, heritage cohort um, um, there it's going to be a broader view of agriculture we'll have some livestock in there we'll have some crop in there um, and uh, it'll just be a broader um, section from the finance sector and, and so um, it is important to realize that uh, you will take a couple courses throughout the program with both cohorts and so you will be able to cross over um, and then probably the other thing that uh, um, you may want to uh, give some thought with regards to uh, um, whether or not you do one or the other is just starting time in terms of for some individuals starting in August um, fits their schedule a little bit better other individuals the uh, um, the uh, um, January start date fits their schedule but um, your cohort will have much more of a pharmaceutical feel veterinary feel um, in the uh, um, animal health cohort so hopefully that helps uh, um, Pete on, on your questions and if not come back um, how many classes can be completed without officially enroll in the program do these uh, credits count towards the degree if enrolled um, in the program later. Um, we do have a certificate and so with that certificate um, you can uh, um, take uh, um, up to uh, 15 hours in the certificate. Um, with the uh, certificate um, all of those courses will roll into the program so you can roll into the program at a later point in time if you um, want to take uh, uh, the, the courses in terms of um, certainly um, we do encourage you to uh, start um, um, in the uh, August and January framework one or the other um, with that um, you will develop relationships for your students or classmates that's one of the things that in some respects while um, you certainly can do a certificate and you can uh, take some courses and um, decide to enroll in later um, one of the things we find is that students do develop uh, those uh, networks um, they develop a relationship with their other courses and that's one of the reasons why we continue to have the on-campus uh, segment simply because it does allow you to develop those relationships with with your classmates um, that may occur in a strict strict distance program where you never meet face to face um, however just uh, conversing with our students and um, debriefing them after the uh, program is done one of the things they always mention is the fact that they did get to know their um, 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 fellow cohort very well and uh, actually develop uh, friendships and so um, while you can um, go ahead and uh, take some classes and then enroll in the cohort later um, probably the big downside that i would see with that is just not developing the re relationships that uh, um, you uh, will um, um, more more intimately and if you uh, continue to go through with those same groups of individuals um, you you develop that relationship um, over over a segment of time other questions
In terms of uh, um, the uh, years of experience are listed at uh, two, two years of uh, job experience. Um, however, um, that will range anywhere from two to five years all the way up to 25, 30, 35 years. And so um, it's a wide range in, in terms of essentially, I would say that probably the average individual would probably be in that um, seven to 10 year range of experience. Um, but again, there's a wide, wide distribution. Um, the main reason we do want the experience is uh, um, it allows you to bring bore into the classroom um, simply because you've had um, more experience in your program and, and uh, um, sometimes you have a, a different view as uh, just uh, um, graduating from an undergraduate program. The other thing that it does is it allows you to get established within your career. And uh, I think that's very important um, as you're thinking of additional education to be well established um, in your career. Um, it will help you to get more out of the program, um, but also it will give you um, more networking experience to bring. And, and so um, as you're going through with your um, um, cohort, um, Certainly having individuals that uh, um, have an in-depth knowledge of the company and the industry they're working for just uh, allows you to learn a lot from um, your, your classmates. And so um, that's why we do uh, um, require at least, at least two years of experience. Other questions? And again, I think you can unmute your mic if you choose to have a conversation. Um, the question Justin had is, what does the, why does the program not require the GMAT? Um, how um, does the program compare to programs that do require the GMAT? Um, one of the things that why we've moved away from the, the GMAT and uh, um, the GRE is that uh, um, a number of years I uh, focused on um, the on-campus program. And um, one of the things that I found is that the GMAT and GRE, um, once an individual has been out um, three to five years, um, the scores tend not to um, predict as well as uh, um, the capabilities of the student. Um, as you get away from uh, um, uh, the university environment, um, your test taking skills tend to atrophy, not that the knowledge atrophies, um, but uh, there's just kind of a routine with regards to uh, taking tests. And so um, we think the best predictor is uh, how you performed in coursework in your undergraduate uh, program, and then how you've uh, um, progressed in your career. And, and so we find that those are better predictors than just the academic taking of a standardized, uh, standardized test. Um, and, and so um, um, we will certainly look at GMAT or GRE scores if uh, someone provides those. Um, but uh, um, again, we uh, um, have found over time that uh, especially individuals that have been out for a uh, um, um, few years, um, it, the uh, GMAT and GRE scores are not um, as good of predictors as um, their um, undergraduate uh, um, um, academic record. And then um, probably more importantly, um, their uh, um, performance in, in their career over, over time. In terms of how does this program compare to programs that uh, do require that, um, one of the things you're actually seeing is there's probably less and less reliance with regards to standardized tests um, as we uh, um, go on in, in terms of, for example, that's been in the news with regards to less reliance on the ACT, SAT, with regards to initial college um, it, it meant and, uh, mittens. and um, um, there are there is a place certainly for standardized exams, um, um, especially um, if you're trying to compare students from uh, um, 
degrees with different universities simply because there are, is a difference with regards to the grading scale um, in, in terms of uh, uh, a grade in the uh, US that maybe is a B um, may uh, um, mean a little bit different than uh, a B um, in, a, in another country. And so it, it does provide that uh, standardization. But uh, um, for most of our individuals, we uh, um, just um, feel that uh, the additional costs, the additional stress of prepping for a GMAT GRE um, is, uh, um, um, does not provide enough information um, um, to uh, add that uh, additional knowledge. And I think the important thing is, is that uh, over the uh, um, 500 students we've had, we uh, have had this uh, lack of the GMAT the entire time. Um, um, we have been very satisfied with the quality of individuals we've uh, um, admitted to the program. And so um, 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 I guess we're just trying to lower the barriers in the hassle of admission with, uh, without the standardized tests. Good question, Justin. Other questions? From Erica, if I'm a K-State grad, does having a master's from the same school matter? Um, in terms of really the only time I think that uh, um, diversity in degrees are important is if you're going to um, teach at an academic university or at an academic institution. And so if you're gonna get a PhD and uh, um, essentially um, wanna get into the teaching, I think at that point, having degrees from uh, separate universities um, um, matters. But uh, for example, um, the undergraduate degree um, into a master's degree at the same university um, um, is, is very common. I would say that uh, um, most individuals many times will have two degrees from one university and uh, um, it um, certainly um, is, is not a negative um, issue. And so, um, um, probably the only place where um, having more than one degree from one school um, is if you're going to do the PhD and if you're going to go in and teach. And, and even there, um, um, sometimes if there's um, time that passes between, the department ends up different. But um, I, I think the, the main reason why um, is hybrid vigor. and uh, um, you don't want to have the same instructors um, time after time after time. Um, we're a large enough department that uh, Kansas State University Department of Agricultural Economics with probably about 30 different faculty members. Um, you'll only have um, really other than myself, you'll only uh, see faculty members once in the program. And so um, to me, you do get that uh, differential thought um, different per teaching styles, different personalities with regards to uh, um, the, uh, the faculty. And so um, given that, um, I would not be concerned um, getting two degrees, uh, a BS and a um, MS from the same institution. Maybe I'll ask, um, turn it around and ask um, the group that are on live in terms of uh, what are the big biggest concerns that you would have um, doing a advanced degree? Um, what, what thoughts or um, things you'd really say, you know, um, this is something I'm concerned about. Time commitment, cost, 
um, certainly those are uh, um, 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 issues. In, in terms of the time commitment, uh, essentially on a per class basis, you're probably looking five to 10 hours per class on a weekly basis. Um, the, I think the important thing to realize is that um, um, of those that start the program, um, probably about 97, 98% um, complete the classwork. And, and so from that perspective, I think the load is, is doable. The other thing I think that's important to realize is that every one of the uh, students in the uh, program are working full time. And so you don't have that competitive disadvantage, so to speak, where um, you're competing against students that the only thing they're doing is uh, um, taking, taking courses. And so um, that's there. Um, certainly the cost um, is um, um, ben beneficial uh, and uh, um, a, a big commitment with, with regards to that, big concern. Um, with, with regards to the cost. Um, I think one of the things to realize is that uh, um, the uh, um, um, promotion or the ability of students to uh, um, 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 pursue other um, employment opportunities that are more lucrative um, is very high within the program. And uh, uh, essentially um, um, over time, um, We've tracked that and there's a fairly good size salary bump um, um, from the time somebody enters the program um, to the time someone graduates. Um, sometimes that's within the um, same firm that they're working with. Sometimes it uh, is, a, is a differential firm. And so while the cost certainly is, is there, um, we have had a number of students that have uh, um, seen that pay off from um, a financial perspective. Um, the other thing is, is throughout the program, whether or not it be a term paper, whether or not it be um, their um, final thesis, we've also seen that uh, um, many of the students have returned uh, um, a fairly good cash flow um, to uh, um, their, their company. Um, in terms of probably the biggest we've, uh, we've seen, at least that we're aware of, is that uh, one individual through their thesis ended up saving their company $100,000 a month. And uh, um, certainly that did provide um, that uh, return to the company and, and uh, um, obviously that resulted in a, in a promotion um, for, for that individual. And so um, while cost, especially the upfront cost is uh, certainly a big consideration, um, it, uh, um, um, uh, the students have seen benefits both in returns to their company, but also um, returns to them personally through um, um, higher, higher salary. Um, in terms of uh, those individuals, we do have had a number of individuals in, in Africa. Um, in terms of, uh, um, they add a huge um, um, diversity to um, the program. And, and so uh, um, the, the big thing, um, obviously, is, is thinking through um, with regards to uh, the admission process. Um, of uh, foreign language, the TOEFL, that international students, especially if English is not their native language, um, that they do need to uh, consider. Um, and then um, the, the other thing um, is uh, um, just uh, thinking through the uh, four trips to um, the, uh, the U.S. Some of the international students, um, we've been able to help them find some sponsorships um, with regards to that. Um, in, in other cases, um, um, they have, uh, um, their companies have paid um, for, for that education process. And so, um, the big thing with African students is to start the process early and uh, um, um, contact Deborah, contact Mary, and they can uh, um, help you through some of those uh, um, um, difficulties. Um, the other thing is that uh, if uh, there's a, a couple of um, um, 
um, individuals from the same continent in the program together, we certainly will um, kind of push you apart to develop uh, networks um, broader than, than just the, the continent you're on. But uh, um, um, it does make life a little bit easier um, when uh, people are in the same time zone. Um, in, in terms of uh, many times in Africa, you're looking at a seven, eight hour, nine hour difference in, in time zone. And so um, um, having um, individuals in the same time zone, I think, I think helps. Um, in terms of stretching the MAD program over five years to help with the budgeting and time commitment, um, in, in terms of probably the big thing is, I think your education um, experience we find, um, probably the, the big difference, and, and this can be a benefit and it can be um, a cost. One of the benefits is that your uh, network will be broader. And uh, um, one of the things I would in, encourage you um, to do is to make sure that you reach out to your cohorts. Um, we've had students that have maybe taken just one class in the program or a couple of classes in the program, and uh, um, they end up uh, developing very strong relationships um, with individuals in the cohort. And so probably the downside is that uh, um, you will need to be a little bit more active in terms of uh, um, developing relationships. Um, the plus side on that is you will have a much broader network than those that uh, finish in, in three years um, or two and a half years. Um, um, and so being in uh, and stretching out the program a little broader, um, if you do develop those relationships, um, you will have a broader, broader network. And, and so um, there's, there's pluses and minuses um, with, with regards to that. In terms of, I would say most of the courses, if not all the courses, Pete, uh, get, um, in terms of um, the, the thing is, and um, um, my area is finance, and not everybody um, likes finance, um, but there's some people that thrive on, on finance, and so um, those that maybe struggle with finance a little bit more will develop partnerships with individuals that maybe work in a bank or have finance more as their day-to-day -day responsibilities. But then there'll be a another course, maybe such as marketing. Um, and this net will really help um, to um, expand um, your ability to, to work through different courses. that um, in some respects may not be your forte. And uh, one of the things that I certainly encourage individuals to think about as they're going through the program, especially of, uh, of the company, simply because I realize that while I can do it, while I can communicate, while I can understand it, I'm not going to be an expert. In